Welcome back to my channel. I have another book video today and this one's gonna be my March reading wrap up. This month I have read a total of eight books and that is the most books I've ever read in a month. For me, that is a really good reading month. Last month I think I read six books. So you know, we're, we're getting up there. I don't even know if I'll be able to hold this book stack up, but I'm gonna try. <sighs> I don't wanna drop it. <laughs> this is all the books that I read in March. I'd like to argue that some of these are like 700 to 800 pages, so it could almost be like 12 books if they were split in half, okay? All right, so since I have so many books to go through, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Last month, I was starting A Court of Thorns and Roses, so the Akatar series, and I finished A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury. So the next one that I read is A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is the war in the Akatar series. I can't say much about the series, obviously, otherwise I will spoil it. I annotated quite a bit in here. It's like the politics of the war in the fairy realm. Five out of five, this book. I would say that it's very close to being head to head with A Court of Mist and Fury. I cried at this book. It was so sentimental, like why it feels like these characters are your family and I don't know how to explain it other than that, but it was amazing. I cried. I loved everything about this book. This book is 699 pages, so it's a 700 page book, but every single word needs to be in there. I would not change the length of this book. I would make more books, but anyways. All right, next, A Court of Frost and Starlight. This book, it was a novella. It's a really tiny little book, and I think it's just really cute. It's about the winter solstice which is, to me, it kind of felt like they were talking about Christmas, but it's not Christmas because they don't celebrate Christmas in the fairy realms. But I gave it a five out of five because I just really enjoyed it. I like anything that these characters have to offer. I will read it all. Next up, this book is a beast. Look at this. Well, first of all, look how many annotations. I think this is the book that I annotated the most. Maybe not, maybe A Court of Mist and Fury, but this is A Court of Silver Flames. This book follows Nesta, which is Farah's sister. If you don't like Nesta, everyone says you're not meant to like Nesta in the first books. She was kind of my favorite sister, and I don't know what that says about me, but I just love a good, real, flawed character. No one is perfect. I feel like Farah is perfect. She has like the best moral compass. She's just, she takes care of her family, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, not everyone is that perfect. And sometimes in life, you just make the wrong decisions over and over again and you don't know why you're doing it. It's like self-sabotage. I don't know, but I think Nessa was my favorite. I just love her energy. I've always loved her. She's just such a, a force. I don't know how to explain it, but this is following Nesta and her love interest. I'm not gonna say anything in case you haven't read the series. If you are gonna skip this because you don't like Nesta, she gets better in this book. But I do think that it's important sometimes to like realize that not all characters are perfect because it's the most, it's more accurate that way. I love that Sarah J Moss wrote a character like this because not everyone is likable. Not everyone is the heroine. They're not the hero of the whole story. Not everyone is like that. That's just not realistic. And I love Nesta. She's my favorite. Favorite. I'll have to reread the series again, but honestly, I don't know why I love her so much. She just, I love her energy. Love it. Five out of five. A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Silver Flames, I would almost say they're six out of fives to me, but maybe that's just because I'm too obsessed. I don't know. Next up, I had a little break from the fantasy genre. So, I read From Lukov with Love, which is a romance. I would say, first thing I'm gonna say, if you can get the book that has the rose bouquet on it and not the skates, get that book. This book, if you know what I'm talking about, that's not floppy. If you're a book girly, you know floppy books are the way because I genuinely, my fingers, my hands were hurting. Not even being dramatic, my hands hurt from trying to hold this open. Like, look at this. When I open this page, if I'm not forcing my wrists or my thumbs, this is how far it opens. Like realistically, you read a book when it's like this, right? This hurts the, the spine. I don't know what is in the spine does not let you like open the book. It hurt 
get the other cover if you can just because it's probably easy to read so this is advertised as an enemies to lovers slow burn romance i wouldn't consider them enemies i would say frenemies to lovers like they're not necessarily full-blown enemies but they're also not friends they kind of just tease each other i don't think that's an enemies when i think of enemies i think of like i would kill you that's how much i hate you enemies which i find it's very hard to do enemies to lovers right in any genre other than fantasy, but I do think it was like a good book. They're paired up, figure skating pairs for competitions, and they kind of realize they have to be friends if they're gonna be in pairs. Could have put a little bit more into the enemy part because I love a good slow burn as long as they kind of hate each other. Don't know why, it's just, it's the vibe, I don't know. <laughs> I gave this a three out of five. Okay, next up, so this book, if you like Akatar and you want that vibe again, guess who recommended it? TikTok, book talk. The girlies got me on this one because they were not lying. This book actually slapped, it is not a joke. The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. So this book is about a vampire and a human, okay? It's not, it's not giving Twilight, it's not giving Vampire Diaries, it's like a story of its own. So this is the vampire version of Hunger Games a little bit, but it follows a girl named Oriya that is adopted by the Nightborn Vampire King, and he adopts her when she's younger, so she doesn't know who her parents are, essentially. There's this thing that's called a Kajari, which is like a legendary tournament that at the end, if you win, you get one wish granted by the goddess of death. Oriya is actually human and she enters this and everyone else is a vampire. So you can only guess how that's gonna go, but she was raised by the Nightborn Vampire King. She's lived her whole life training for this. She meets Rain. He's a vampire, but he's a different vampire. He's basically giving Resan from Akatar a little bit. It's funny because this kind of gives the vibe that they're enemies to lovers. Everyone says this is enemies to lovers, which they are because a vampire and a human aren't really meant to be friends. I feel like the guys in enemies to lovers kind of always give the vibe that they like the girl and they kind of flirt with her. But then the girl is just like, I gotta do what I gotta do. Get out of my way. And this is kind of a similar vibe. I do love this author's writing and the detail that goes into the world building, I think is perfect. And this is, this is a good book. This is five out of five. Perfection. There's the tension, there's the action. The girl is a baddie. She is, for a human, I'm like, okay girl. The vampires in this have wings. So if you read Akatar, you know Wings? Iconic. If you read Agatara and you know Wings, there's Wings in this, okay? That's why it's called Wings of Night, is because the vampires have wings, but there's two different races of vampires, and so one of them has like feathered wings and one of them have like the bat wings almost, if I remember correctly. I just love this book so much. It is definitely on my favorites list, 100%. 100% read this book if you want to feel like Akatar again, or just read this book if you're new to fantasy, but you also like a little bit of romance in there. I think this would be perfect. In love. Okay, so the next one is a YA. I got this back in 2016 when I had first started my reading journey, and then I kind of fell off and I came back to my reading world. <laughs> but back then, this was my favorite book. And do not judge me because something about the vibe of this book reminds me of One Tree Hill, if you've ever watched that show. You might understand, I don't know why it gives me that vibe. There's a big opportunity for people to not like this because they're very immature, but they're teenagers being teenagers. There is no logic, it's only emotion. So I gave this a four out of five, but I think I'm biased because this used to be my favorite book. This is a second chance romance between this girl named Kelsey and a guy named David, where they meet when they're younger. I believe they meet when they're 13-ish, you go in alternating timelines to before when they were younger and then after when they're no longer friends, when she gets to high school, he moves to that town after, it's a year later. So that's why it's called Last Year's Mistake. So it's only been a year, but so much has changed and you kind of try to figure out why it is that they stopped talking and what happened to make them not be friends anymore. I love this little romance. It's very high schoolish though, so if you don't like books like that, 
I don't know if you're gonna like this. I gave it a four though. Okay, so the next book that I read is part of a duology and I read both books this month. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Turns out it's pronounced Lee, but you live and you learn. This whole thing is about this massive heist that this guy, Kaz, he is the lieutenant of the Dregs, which is this gang in Ketterdam, essentially. There's a lot of different gangs, but the Dregs... This is the tattoo that the Dregs wear on their forearms, and it says, no mourners, no funerals, which is essentially them telling each other good luck. Kaz and Enish. Seriously? This is the definition of slow burn, honestly. And it's not even slow burn where you see it ignite. It's just slow burn killing you, even in the second book. It's slow burn everywhere. But Kaz, amazing. He has a cane. I think he's maybe not able to fend for himself because he has a cane and he has he basically broke his leg when he was younger. But he is so... He can do it all. He can do it all. <sighs> all six main characters for the highest are so different than the other. Lee Bardugo said she wrote this series mainly because she loved the characters so much. She was like writing it for the characters. And the heist is just as amazing. It's, once you get to the heist, you're like, oh my God, you cannot stop reading. The way that Kaz thinks, I don't know how he just smuggles himself out of these situations. If I was that smart, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. He's so smart, it's unbelievable. And I just want to be like Kaz, or maybe I just want to be with him. We don't know, but five out of five, amazing. Read this, it is a masterpiece, okay? Last book I read is The Crooked Kingdom, which is following Six of Crows, and this is after they're done the heist. I cannot say a single thing without spoiling anything because then it'll kind of give you an idea of what's happened. Something bigger in the Grishaverse is happening, and they kind of have to deal with that but you follow everyone again. I'm not gonna lie, I think I cried, I think I did. But this book is like a four and a half out of five. I think it was just, there was something a little bit off that I felt like it was a 0.5, 4.5, but it's still basically a five star. It's amazing, love the cast, love everything about this universe. And I have the Shadow and Bones, so maybe we'll read that next. That is all the books that I read in March. This was an amazing reading month. I honestly feel like I read A Court of Wings and Ruin like two, three months ago. It feels like a lifetime ago with all these other stories that I've read since. Everything was basically a four or a five stars. And then I have like one three star. I would, I would argue that maybe last year's mistake was also a three star, but something about it just gave me four. I don't, overall, this was an amazing reading month. I honestly had a bit of a reading hangover after Akatar series, honestly. They need to give a new book. I need to read Throne of Glass and Crescent City as well. So I'm taking breaks in between series right now, but at one point I will tackle the Throne of Glass and then I think I'm gonna wait for the Crescent City for the third book to come out before I start reading it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was entertaining and I hope you maybe found books that you wanna read or books that you don't wanna read. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I think that's everything. Okay. <laughs>